Okay, we're continuing our tutorial from the uh, previous one. Uh, we were explaining what a wave file is. Um, <clears throat> one thing I missed, which I'll put in writing on the other one, is that generally most of the wave files I was describing there are actually um, stereo wave files. That means there's two tracks, left and right. So when you hear things, you're hearing it out of the left and right speakers. Although a WAV file doesn't have to be left and right, it can be mono and um, stereo. And you can actually have 5.1 or 3.1 for movies where there's many tracks. But generally speaking, when we hear a track on the radio or the internet or iTunes or wherever else, it's in stereo. So that means two tracks. So you, the previous wave files you saw were two tracks. In a digital audio workstation, it's a different story. Those wave files can be mono. Uh, for example, a kick drum, boom, 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 is quite often mono. It's only made sounding stereo by the room. Okay, so we're moving on. And you need somewhere on your computer to actually store your wave files. So I stored some here in the little Pioneer DJ unit, WAV files, create a folder, store your WAV files there. Um, and similarly, um, here's a track that I'm creating myself in a digital audio workstation. I used to work a lot in Logic. Uh, you probably heard of that. I work currently in Reaper because I'm back on the PC. And we go into the song and then as I store audio and store my WAV files either in there or in the audio, okay? So somewhere to store your WAV files. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to look at a program called Recordbox, R-E-K-O-R-D-B-O-X. This is a free app from Pioneer, and it's used for their DJ units dating back to the CDJ2000, I think it is. I use the XDJR1, uh, but what this does is prepares your songs for, record, for use in a DJ unit. It's a pretty good app. Um, and what it actually does is when you import a track, which means import track, and it'll look, as you can see, for a WAV file or some type of file that it's compatible with, including MP3s, AAC, and a few others. All right, so once you actually bring that track in, the first thing it does is it analyzes that track. It does this automatically. So it's analyzing it here, over here, very quickly. And one of the reasons it analyzes it, it wants to know how many bits it is. This is 16-bit. I made sure they're all 16-bit. It'll take 24-bit. It'll take various bits, and it will take MP3s. And But I find it best, personally, not to mix formats. Keep them all the same. Do all WAV files, all 16-bit. Don't muck around because I'm not saying it won't work, but you can set yourself up for problems. Okay, carrying on. It's 16-bit format. Now, I've named this already, and I've named this one. Um, what it's actually done, which is very important, is it's stored the tempo. This is 138 BPM, beats per minute, means it's fast. You see this, 132, uh, that's slower, uh, 136. A lot of digital audio workstations won't even do that, but, you know, some do. Um, okay, so it's analyzed it and it said it's 138 BPM. Now, what we're going to do on this quick tutorial is we're going to explain how to set cue points and how to set loops on this unit. All right, up here we have a navigator. Down here... We have the top part of the wave file. Remember we showed you in the previous thing what a wave file looks like. This is a wave file cut in half and sort of focused in so you can see those same sort of peaks and troughs that are in a fairly loud wave file. If we go to the quiet section, uh, you'll see them drop a little bit, not much, because probably not a very accurate display. Um, but up here, you can see them dropping here, particularly on the end, they drop quite a bit. That was what we were showing before in our first tutorial. All right, we're going back to the beginning of this track, and we're going to go to a, a piece that looks like there might be a build. So here we have a build. You hear the build coming in. Now 
let's say you want to get that build and use it live in, say, a DJ type situation, all right? Okay, it seems to start about there. There. Switch quantize on. Quantize means that it basically snaps to the grid. See the grids here? It means it snaps them. I'll make it expand out a little bit more. You can see the grid. Now what we do is we click an endpoint. You see that little lines come in there? It's created an endpoint right there. Right there. That means it's got an endpoint. Now hit, there's only three cue points, A, B, and C. Hit A, it turns green. That means it's a cue point. Let me play there. And then we hit that. And similarly on the DJ unit, I'll show you later on the XDJR1, it will locate to that cue point. So if you know you want to actually um, go to the build, you'll be able to do it. Nice long build. Now here, it's gone into a kind of a melodic riff here, okay? So we might want to loop that. We're just giving an example. Okay, so we go back. We'll zoom in a little bit. We'll go back. You have to muck around with these things a little while, a little bit to actually get used to them. I haven't been using this particular software that long, but I've used software for the last 20 years, so you get to know how they basically work fairly quickly. Okay, I can tell that there, it's starting to go to the next section. All right, so what I'm gonna do is create another endpoint in. All right, there's the second endpoint. Let's label it, hopefully, as an endpoint. The next thing I'm going to do after in, you've got to be t aware of this because this is a little bit of a tricky program. We hit 32. Now, the reason that, that you do that is it loops it over a 32 bar section. Most DJ units, like the XDJR1, they don't loop much larger than 32. They actually will, they don't say it on the front. They will, but it's a pain in the ass, to put it bluntly, because it can cause problems. So, you know, keep it to 32. Now we hit B. Notice it turned yellow. It's turned yellow. That's green. That's a cube point. This is a loop point. All right. So we'll play the loop point here, and we'll hear what that sounds like. So you'll basically notice that that is a uh, the chord section there goes over 32 bars, and therefore the 32 bar loop took it and turn it around in circles. Most people won't hear that, so that means you can just endlessly play that over. One good thing about these type of units is once it's been quantized, well, the quantize is really just to be accurate in selecting your grids, grid points. Once it's been quantized and understood, when it goes on to the DJ unit, the DJ unit reads the same thing, and it says, oh, it's, you know, 138 beats per minute. Um, and it, you can actually synchronize, if you've got two turntables or two jog wheels, you can synchronize the second track with the first. Uh, for example, the second track might be slower, say 136, whereas this is 138. This one, 138 as the master, and you t put 136 as the slave and hit sync, it will step up to 138. So you can mix the two tracks together quite comfortably. All right, we're going to put one more loop in. So we hit reloop. That means that it can go past there. If you don't have that on, it will very annoyingly just snap back to the beginning of the loop all the time. So you don't want that. So let's go to some other section. We'll go here. So that looks fairly interesting. And we'll have a listen. And we're going to put another loop in. Now here we have a quite a nice sort of ambient type section of, of a loop. We'll just locate it nearby. Okay, we can hear it went bang and it hit the actual loop right there and create our end point first remember the procedure if you don't get this right it'll set a hot cue and you won't be able to set a loop so after you hit the end hit 32 
or you can hit 16 or 8 or 4, whichever you like. So we've hit that, and then we've hit that. Now we're going to hit this, and we're going to store it in C. And play it. Okay, so you get the idea that basically we've now created loops within the record box software. These can be transported to a DJ unit. Later on, I'm going to show you more about WAV files. In a digital audio workstation, you work with hundreds of files, not just one or two, and not stereo either. Not, these are master files, more or less. They're mastered stereo files. Mostly when people go out and they have, you know, dance parties or, you know, they play a CD or, like I said before, listen to stuff on the internet, um, they're hearing a master, some kind of a master. And this is what we're dealing with here. What we're doing is processing the master slightly so we can actually use it in a creative context. So if I hit this one, play, I go to that part. Hit that one, you've got to be careful. But on the DJ unit, it will obey the quantize, so you won't get something that will jerk out of rhythm. But, so it makes it easier. Over the last few years, they've made it easier. And we go to the last section. So you see how that works? And here we come back to our build. Now our build doesn't have a loop on it. You can see there's no loop on that build in the screen. Okay? So basically, we've learned the preliminary of working in the um, um, <laughs> record box software. It's a free app, you can download it, and uh, I suggest you try a few things out on it and get used to it if you're inclined that way. See you on the next tutorial.